Hey everyone, Dr. T here. Today we're going to be talking about PPE, personal protective equipment. You've seen a lot about personal protective equipment in the news. There's been shortages of personal protective equipment. There's been stockpiling. There's been tariffs and other things discussed about it. And you've seen pictures like these regarding it, where healthcare workers are being forced to maintain their equipment as long as possible and use it beyond its intended life. But today we're not going to necessarily talk about supply and demand and economics of all that. Some of that has to do with expirations and stockpiling. Today instead we're going to talk about what exactly is the PPE. What are the different things we use when we're using a piece of equipment to protect ourselves or our patients? What is an N95? What does that even mean? So let's get to it. Okay, so here we have a lot of different personal protective equipment. Some of it's basic stuff that you've already known from watching TV shows, common sense, or if you're involved in the medical field, you're already aware of some of this stuff. Some of this stuff is a little bit more on the high-end things that you either know about because of the news or you have seen in TV shows, or again, you're a healthcare professional and you're actively using all this stuff yourself. So for starters, you have basic things to protect issues from us being contaminated between patients as well as protecting myself, which is hand washing and rubber gloves. So basic rubber gloves obviously are just rubber gloves. These are disposable. These are non-sterile. They make sterile varieties that come wrapped in individual use sterilized equipment packaging and those are for surgeries and other sterile procedures obviously. Next we have the bouffant cap. This is purpose is to cover your hair. Haha, ha, not so necessary for me, but still it just goes around all of your hair and it covers your hair to prevent particulate and patient blood and other fluids from getting on you as well as your hair falling off into like a surgical field. You'll see these and you'll also see the more tight skull cap looking things like you would see like a do-rag, like a biker type of a thing. And some people make designs and sew their own with different types of fabric and, and different designs. So that's that. Then we cover our feet and shoes with booties and shoe covers. There's this normal sized one for regular sneakers. There is also the things are about to get real messy and you have the big ones that go up to your knee. I'll wear these during C-sections because they can be very bloody sometimes and there's a lot of fluid and things can fall off the table onto the floor. Either way, this is only real purposes to protect my clothing and, and legs from blood and other fluid debris getting on me. I'm not actually protecting the patient in any way with those for the most part. Next, we get into masks and there are a variety of masks that we have and we'll get into some of the other ones soon with the things like N95 that you hear on the news but masks come in a variety of different types and flavors most of the time for a surgery mask these will filter out particulate but they're loose fitting they do not fit snug to your face and they only serve to have my germs not get into a patient either in the field during a surgery or for droplet particulate. Uh, so they come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Most of them have a, a metal piece in there so that it can form around your nose. Some, of, A lot of them have uh, stickers. So this one has a sticker and you'll see that the purpose of that is to stick to your nose so that it doesn't fall not so much that it doesn't fall off, it's so that my airflow doesn't come up out of my face, it goes down beneath the bottom. And why is that important? Because if you're a glasses wearer, if you have safety goggles on, or if there's a shield, you can cause a lot of fogging. So by having the sticker, it forces airflow to go out the bottom and out the sides, and then you don't fog up your vision. So that's one mask. There are different other types, they're all very similar. Uh, some of them have some foam stripping and this this one's purpose is the same trying to diffuse airflow so that you don't fog up your mask and this one comes built in with a face shield so when you put this on you already have a face shield in front of your face to protect from splatter and 
in this COVID era, on top of these, we're also wearing new things. So now we have this, which is basically a splatter shield to keep particulate off my face and to keep droplet, which could be infected with coronavirus, from getting on me. Um, this is a smaller version. There's a much more aggressive one here. This one serves to truly fit around my face and ears. It makes it very difficult to hear and very difficult to breathe. It gets very hot with this thing. So uh, thank your healthcare providers who you know are wearing these things. These things are very difficult to contend with. So moving on, next steps you'll see people wearing are these throwaway disposable gowns. So you'll see people wearing these sorts of things. So what you'll see is it just goes around like a smock. You put your arms through, they tie up the back, and then this protects all of your clothing from all of the, anything from your patients. It's, this stuff is not just used specifically because of COVID-19. This stuff is used all the time when we have isolation precautions for a patient. We don't want to have patients cross-contaminating with other patients, so these are one use only. You'll wear them, or a visitor will even wear these. Go into a room, speak with their loved one, we'll examine a patient, and then we'll throw these out on the way out so that when we go to the next person, things aren't sticking to my shirt and my clothing trying to prevent infections that go from one patient to the other. So that's what those are about. Next, we're gonna talk about what's in the news a lot these days, and that's the N95 respirator. What does that mean? The N stands for not oil proof, not oil resistant. There are three different varieties of these types of respirators. There's N, there's R, and there's P. N is not oil resistant at all. R is oil resistant and P is oil proof. So the petrol chemical industry will wear the, the oil resistant ones and we don't need them in healthcare at the moment. The 95 stands for the fact that it will block 95% of all particulate matter that is 0.3 microns or larger. So it's extremely tiny particles but still particles. It will keep most all of them out, 95%. They also make an N97, which is 97% effective, and then they make an N100, which is actually 99.97% effective, but for all intent and purposes, that's considered 100%. These standards are all governed by an organization called the National Institute of Occupational and Safety Health, NIOSH and they came up with all the guidelines for the 95%, 97%, and 100%. So these come in a different variety of shapes and sizes too. You've definitely seen these probably in the news. Same thing, they have a little bit of foam sometimes. They definitely have a piece of metal so that it hold shape so that you can fit it around your nose correctly and what these do is you'll put them on you'll put the rubber bands will go around your face one goes underneath one goes above your ear you mold it to your nose as best you can you mold it to your face and now you can even hear that my voice is muted some because this is doing a much better job of filtering air so that my air is not actually getting out as easy as much as nothing is getting in. So as you can well imagine, these are much more snug and the breathing becomes actually a little bit more labored. So when your healthcare colleagues or friends or relatives that you know to do this, or if you do this yourself, you already know, it is very challenging to wear this all day. It is very exhausting for them and it's very difficult. So that's one type. Here's another variety. They're just basically different manufactured sizes. 3M, um, you've heard them in the news too. Um, this is in 1870. They're just different sizes and shapes. It's the same thing. 
except it's a, a little bit different shape. And the reason you have different shapes as these is because people's faces are different size and not everyone fits the same type. So this is more of a duck bill shape and you can see it's more, it sticks out a little bit more. And it's the same thing though, it's molding to my face all the way around to prevent all airflow from coming out in any of these gaps so that the filtration properties of this can actually filter correctly. So what happens if you don't fit any of those? You don't just take one of these randomly and use it. You have to be fit tested. So you put the mask on and there's a different couple ways of doing it. There's a machine that can do it for us or sometimes they'll put a, a hood around you and spray in some chemical like aspartamine, something sweet that has a taste and a flavor with very low dose and they'll aerosolize it and spray it in there and then if you can taste it with the mask on you know it's getting through so you know it's not doing its job and then you didn't fit so what happens when you don't fit and you're just out of luck you're just gonna wear a normal mask and hope for the best no and then you get into other things and the next thing that's available to us is something that's colloquially called a PAPR P-A-P-R a powered air purifying respirator and these come with its own battery pack. This one is about four pounds ish. And what this does is it wraps around your waist and you wear it along your back. And this hose goes to a mask. And this helmet, it goes in the back, it goes around the back of your head, and then it blows air through the front. And then all the air blows out the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. There's holes in the bottom and the airflow will blow out there and it'll also leak out some of the sides. So there's a constant airflow that's moving air across your face and out. So there's a pressure so that the airborne contaminants can't actually get into your face because there's a constant air pushing out and away. And that's what protects you instead of doing the N95 respirators. There's this thing. This is obviously way more expensive. This is a piece of equipment. This needs to be sterilized and protected. And depending on how many people that you have that need these, these may or may not be at on hand. The masks are reusable to a degree until they get soiled or damaged. These will not last forever. So brief demonstration, what you do is you put the pack on around your waist and the pack sits on your lower back and then you take this and you put this on your head this goes underneath your chin you adjust the helmet And then when you turn it on, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but that's blowing air across my face the whole time. And yes, this is protecting me. I'm wearing a four pound weight on my hip the whole time and air is blowing by my ears a lot. So it's hard to hear. You get a lot of glare and reflection off the protective shield face thing. And that can be annoying too, especially when you're trying to look at something specific. So while it's great that these things are keeping us safe, these things are also sometimes very uncomfortable and inconvenient to wear. But it's what we have and safety is much more important than not having it all. They also have different varieties of these. I've seen some with a three filter pack that's probably like wearing a gallon of milk around your waist at all times. It's about eight pounds. It's extremely heavy, extremely uncomfortable. So there's that as well. Moving beyond these, you would get into some of the high order stuff that you see in movies for true contagions with like the hazmat suit and things that block everything from getting into you. Bear in mind, these sorts of respirators, these are particulate respirators. These do not block gases and vapors. They block particulate only. So. If you were exposed to 
chlorine gas or something like that, you need an actual gas mask and that sort of material to protect yourself. So I hope you enjoyed that small sampling of the different types of PPE we're using amongst the COVID-19 pandemic at the moment. It doesn't obviously include everything. It's just a sampling of most of the most common things. So leave a comment. Tell me what your least favorite one is. If you have experience with this stuff, if you're an N95 user in the healthcare business, tell me what your experiences are on that with regards to either fit testing or your personal experiences. I'd love to see it. And until next time, stay safe out there and we'll talk soon.